Hi, welcome to the training in SAP FICO. The topic of training is bank accounting. Normally, bank accounting, you know, in normal scenarios, it relates to the banking transactions, the transactions which we do with banks on a daily basis. It may be an incoming payment and outgoing payment it may be bank charges it may be any other interest or other charges with the bank so all those transactions which are related to the banks they they have been taken up in the sap system and all transactions related to banks are covered under bank accounting in sap bank accounting is one of the important component within SAP FI module. It is not a sub-ledger. In SAP FI accounts payable, accounts receivable or asset account are termed as a sub-ledger. But SAP, uh, SAP FI bank accounting is not a sub-ledger but it is one of the sub-applications. It basically manages accounting with banks at the same time it supports country specific payment requirements. Bank accounting includes management of bank master data, the creation and processing of incoming and outgoing payments for cash management as well as for liquidity management. In bank accounting, we define all the country specific parameters for manual and electronic payment processing, payment forms, settings for lockbox processing, lockbox which is basically used in United States. So with the help of bank accounting, you can enhance your business to a new level. All the manual processes related to the banks can be automated. You can make automatic payments to the vendors. You can have automatic bank reconciliations with the bank. So a lot of automizations can be done with the help of bank accounting in any company. Company mean basically refers to the company code in SAP. So configuration of bank accounts for payment transactions is an important step. This is to ensure that each bank and the payment method you specify which banks is to be used for the payment as the payment methods in today's world are number of different way outs. You can have payment through checks, you can do NEFT, you can do RTGS payment. So a number of payment methods have been evolved in today's world. So which way you want to make the payment, those payments are customized and on the basis of that payments are done through the system. Again, the bank accounting is automized in such an extent that you don't need to do manual bank reconciliations. Even bank reconciliations can be automated through the system. Further going, banking transactions in SAP are subdivided. In SAP, there are different sub-accounts for one particular bank account which are used for posting of incoming and outgoing payments. Accounts for outgoing checks, outgoing bank transfers, incoming checks and bank collections. So we will be discussing these all things and will be exploring things through the SAP system that how things can be automated with the help of this one of the component of bank SAP FI module. Now moving up next is 
as we discussed now table of content we'll be discussing about the overview as we discussed already the overview on bank accounting bank transactions which can be done through manual payment and automatic payments check management can be done bank reconciliations manual bank statement and electronic bank statement lock box and cash journal now moving to the overview it manages the accounting with the company's bank help in both incoming and outgoing payment transactions as said it is a component of sap fi module automatic and manual bank transactions bank reconciliation done easier with less efforts payments can be made in two ways one is manual payment another is automatic payment so as discussed that many of these automations are available through the sap erp software in which we will be working under the bank accounting now moving to the next is every company needs some way to make the payments to their vendors as we mentioned over here that the those two ways are manual payment and automatic payment so first we will be discussing how the system performs the manual payment so first we'll look for the manual payment process how we do the manual payments through the sap system and then after that we will be moving to the automatic payment process that how a manual process can be automated and the things could be done automatically through the system by enhancing the system by the help of customizations and configurations which can reduce the efforts of the organizations in various ways so moving to the manual payment we will be going for the following transactions and we'll see how the payment can be done so first we will be creating a bank account bank gl account which basically means a ledger has to be created in sap and with the help of the ledger only the transactions can be done so i hope you must have done this in gl ap or ar how a gl master is created and how that has been used for the transactions next is we'll book a vendor invoice first and then on the basis of that vendor invoice we'll be making outgoing payments through the system and again outgoing payment could be two ways one is a normal payment and another could be an advance payment now to elaborate this let's take an example before moving up to the sap system and those practical examples or scenarios we can take up in the system how they are been performed so there are a couple of scenarios let's take one of the scenarios for the manual payment process so one would be that we can go for booking an invoice and after booking a vendor invoice we will be making the normal payment to the vendor against the invoice a very common process followed in every company or every organization the another process could be that when a purchase order is raised on the basis of the purchase order an advance payment is made to the vendor the advance payment could vary from from 10% to 100% on the basis of the terms agreed with the vendor by the company and first the advance payment is done and then when the goods are delivered the vendor raises the invoice and once the invoice is booked in the system then the remaining payment to the vendor is done on the basis of the invoice by the company so let's move and check how these processes can be done in the sap system so now first of all what we will be doing is we'll be creating a 
bank GL account in the SAP system. So moving to create the bank GL account will move to the transaction FS00. Enter. Now in this, we need to select a GL account number over here which we want to create. So number which we want to create, first of all we want to see, we need to see that how many GL account are already there and which number is vacant for to be used next. So to look after the list of the GL account, we need to go to this search option so that the list of GL could be taken now. So as you can see, these are the number of list of GL which are already defined in the SAP system and this one series refers to the asset. So in this particular asset range you can see from uh, z from 1 to 7 already the GL masters are already existing. So what we can do is we can take the next number. So suppose we take the next number in the screen could be suppose I take 1 0 for this and now I can go as you can see it is doesn't exist in the system so what I need to do is I need to create this particular ledger account so I will be going to the create option over here so when I move over here I need to select the account group so I will be selecting the assets over here as an account group now this is a part of a balance sheet account so I need to select the balance sheet and then we need to fill the details about the GL account. So suppose I am opening an account and the name of the bank would be suppose Citibank and bank account. Now once you have filled the text and the long text now we will moving to the next tab that is the control data by which the different data is posted in the systems are controlled. So in this you need to fill is you have to take this line item display only. None of the other fields are required as they are not relevant at this point of time. So we need to take this line item display only so that whatever the transactions posted and the document number will be generated we will be able to have a display of those documents. So we ticked the line item display. Now moving to the next is create bank interest tab. Now in this we need to select the filled status groups. So the filled status groups used will be now in this case there are multiple filled status groups but every group has its own purpose. So for banking transactions there is a specific group that is G005 which relates to bank accounts. So this is what you need to take. So double click on this and your filled status groups will be selected. So this is what the things you need to fill it over here and once these have been filled you can move up and you can save. When Once we save it your GL master is created. So you can see this warning and green message is coming. If it is uh, there should not be any red messages else everything is okay you can click to continue and your GL master has been created as you can see the message displayed is data saved. So once you get any message like data saved that means that particular part is successfully completed. So we have created this asset now so you can if you want to check again you can go to this display over here click on it and go to the starting and you can see the data has been filled and your GL account has been created. So in this way you would be creating your bank account GL master or you can say bank GL master. This is the ledger in which all your banking transactions values get updated or posted. So we have moved first point has been completed by us. So this is what I have created. Now if I want to see that this particular GL account doesn't have any value. 
So I can copy this from over here. Select Control C. I can go to the transactions lesson FBL3N just to check this particular bank. It doesn't have anything in it. So if you ex execute it, we find no items. So no items have been selected because there is no item as of now in the system. So now moving next is the first step have been completed. We have created a GL account with the 100010 as Citibank account. Now moving next is book vendor invoice. So now we'll be booking a vendor invoice and we'll make a payment against that to the vendor in a later stage. So very first step is to book an invoice against the vendor and then when the vendor invoice is booked we will be making the payment on the invoice to the vendor so as to make his account clear. So let's move to the invoice, vendor invoice posting. Transaction code as you can see FB60. So we'll be executing FB6060. Enter. Now we have entered now this is screen you can see on the header it is there enter vendor invoice for company code 1200. So now we now in this particular case you must have to take care that when you execute this transaction your company code is correctly displayed over here. Like my company code is 1200 it is being perfectly displayed correctly but in case your company code is something different than this 1200 in that case you need to come back over here to company code and you need to change it over here. Suppose I change it to 1100 enter so you can see the company code has been changed but I need to post the transactions in the company code 1200 so I can go back again to this company code I can change the company code. So company code basically refers to the company for which I am doing the transactions. So I have changed my company code now I can I can fill these details and can book the vendor invoice. So the very first thing I need to select is a vendor code. So for selecting a vendor code I need to execute the transaction. Enter. Now you can see this there is a vendor created over here. We will be selecting it as a vendor. In the same vendor we need to put the invoice date. So suppose I take the invoice that as 12-11 and I also take the posting date as 12-11. Now in this case you need to amount will be taken at a later time. In this case now what invoice do you want to raise? You want to credit the vendor but what GL you would be debiting? So it should be any expense GL or it could be any purchase GL something that. So we'll be going to this and get the list of the ledger while uh, the option and we will see that which GL we can take as a debit part. So out of this we can take this purchase account as a debit. So let's double click on it. So a GL is selected. This GL will get debited as you can see over here. So now we can fill the amount in it. Suppose I am making a purchase of 15,000 US dollars. The currency is displayed over here to USD because I am doing the transactions for my company in USD currency because my company's current uh, country currency is USD. So moving up next is we can have a tax code as well over here. So when we make any purchases the vendor imposes some or the other kind of a taxes as an input part. So it could be a VAT, it could be service tax, it could be something else depending upon the kind of invoice the vendor has booked. So what I would be taking over here as a tax code could be, let's see. So there are a couple of tax codes created over here. What I will be taking up suppose is VAT input tax charge to the company 8%. So let's take 8% on this. So when you select this 8% you need to select the tax jurisdiction as well for the transaction because the tax code is dependent upon the tax jurisdiction 
for which country and which city and which state this tax is applicable for so for tax jurisdiction you need to go again to have a list of this now over here you need to fill the state country or city so suppose I fill the country as USA and whatever the tax jurisdictions are there it will be reflected so in my case there is only one jurisdiction but in your case you can have number of jurisdictions created and accordingly you can do the transaction posting depending upon the type of tax relevant for that particular city and state so double click on it and it will be selected so you can see the tax jurisdiction code has been selected now we moving next with the help of tab from the keyboard will be moving one by one to the next now over here there is a text field where you want to fill any text you can write text over here like I've, I, I wrote it like vendor invoice moving next is now is the business area so business area is mandatory in my case but in your case it may vary as per the requirement so I need to fill the business area over here so I have taken the business area this is what you need to take in this particular line as I have taken so you need to take the GL you need to put the amount you need to if you want you can put some text on it that is an optional part for you and then you can take the business area you can take the text and text jurisdiction so text jurisdiction is taken only when you are taking any kind of a taxes if applicable so moving next is over here also you can write uh, you can have some text if you want to uh, write any kind of a text for clarification for future references of your colleagues and all so you can put this text over here as well now to get this text code calculated in the system what you need to do is you need to take this calculate text until you, you select this checkbox your tax will not be calculated on this particular amount of 15,000 so when I select this box you will see that the amount over here has been populated this amount was not populated earlier to you but as you select this checkbox your amount has been populated on a screen and that is the total amount of invoice which will be applicable for the particular case so you can select this particular amount and this amount you need to copy and you need to paste on this over here in the amount column because this is your total amount total invoice amount so as you have taken this now when I have taken this amount from over here to here I can put enter on the screen and you can see that there will be certain changes enter you can see now the amount over here balance is got zero and this particular part has changed from green to red to green so when it has been changed from red to green means it is okay green, green basically means the go signal so it is okay now if we can go and we can simulate this invoice so once you simulate you can see your document will be reflected to you it is basically a preview of the document which will be posted and the, the document will be in this particular format so your vendor has been credited with 16,200 your purchases will be debited with 15,000 on your input tax will get debited with $1,200 so if you find that this particular document is correct and very much okay then you can go and you can click on to this post option which will get your document posted so I am click this post option button and you can see now the invoice hand be, has been booked and the document number has been generated on the screen in your uh, in the footnote part this is the document which has been generated so in case you want to see this document again you need to go to this document display and you can have a look of the document you just posted so it shows you your account number your amount against the the accounts 
your text code has been reflected over here so this is what the document is all about even if you can want you can go to the uh, document header and you can check other details as well that by whom the document has been posted the entered by the date of entry transaction code or the time of entry and all so this is how the invoice can be booked for a vendor now once we have booked the invoice for the vendor over here now let's check the invoice that how the vendor ledger is reflecting after posting of invoice so for checking to have a look of the vendor ledger we need to go to the transaction FBL 1N you need to select the vendor and then you can go to execute so once you execute this transaction you can see that we just did a, a, a invoice posting of 16,200 US dollars which has been posted over here in the ledger account so as of now this particular vendor that is TCS has only an invoice in its book of $16,200 which has to be paid to this particular vendor by the company so the ledger is correct fine even you can check the balance of the vendor with FK10N enter you can see you have to need to select the vendor you need to select the company code and the fiscal year and then you can go and you can execute this execute button and here you can have a look that as of now you have just 16,200 balance because these are previous transactions which have become zero so as of now only the current balance is this much that is sixteen two hundred dollars so moving back we are successfully created or posted a vendor invoice now the next we will be moving up is making a payment against the outgoing against the vendor invoice so when we move to make a payment against the vendor invoice the transaction code is F-53 this is a normal payment so moving to a payment to the vendor F-53 enter in this case you need to select the document date suppose I am making the payment on 15th that is today so you need to select the posting date document date then the type company code you need to cross check this data and all those things filled over here are correct then we will be moving next is the bank data in bank data you need to select your bank account over here so for your bank account I have to go to my bank so I can go and I can have a search for my bank if I don't remember the GL number so over here we can move for selecting the GL so the ledger we I have created was this Citibank account so I can double click on this and the bank account will be selected then I can put the amount over here if I am making the full amount payment against the invoice I can put 16,200 moving next you can write the text as well so vendor payment then you can move to the next so these are the details which you need to fill at the time of payment to the vendor now over here in this account you need to select the vendor account over here so if you don't remember the vendor account you can go to this options list of vendors will be what are the list of the vendors in the system and on the basis of that you can take the vendor account so as of now there is only one vendor in case you have got multiple vendors you can select the vendors accordingly so double click on it the vendor has been selected now we can move to this process open item so when you click on to the process open item it shows you okay an entry is required in value date you can see when error message has been populated when it is read it means error that means you must need to fill it otherwise the system will not allow you to move forward to the next so the value date is 15 suppose I put the same date as value date and now I can move to this process open item and we'll click you will see that the system takes you to 
the open items which are there in the vendor ledger and the open item against which the payment has to be done so this is the open item where 16200 is already selected over here in case you want to deselect you can deselect and you can see when you deselect it the balance over here assigned becomes zero double click on it and it will get selected again so when you select it gets blue and again it get assigned over here so you can see that the amount entered at the beginning with the bank data in the initial screen was 16200 when you selected this invoice here it become again 16200 so it should be equal to zero and which is already there so this means the debit is equal to credit and now on the basis of this you can make the payment and you can move to simulate so for simulating you need to go to this document simulate simulate basically gives you a preview of the transactions what it will be if it is posted so the document which will be posted will be that Citibank gets credited and the TCS that is the vendor gets debited so you can see this minus sign represents credit or else you can also identify with posting keys as well so 50 posting key basically means credit GL credit whereas 25 means vendor debited so if you find this transactions to be okay you can go to this particular post option and your document gets posted so again you will find a document number is generated at the footer and this document number is a reference that the payment has been made with the document number 1500010 so now once we have made the payment again now let's move and have a check on the vendor ledger account so it is fbl1n enter now once you move over here again you can select the vendor account and you can have a look to the open item so it says there is no open items why because earlier it was an open item when we when we booked the invoice but when we made the payment we selected that open item that is the invoice and against that we made the payment so what the system does is it clears the open item to cleared items so if you want to see your right your clear item you need to move to your clear item checkbox here you can put the date for which date range you want to see the clear items so suppose I want to see for today so I can put the dates from and to for particular day if you want to see for a couple of days you can put the date accordingly if you want for a month or two months or any number of days you can fill the range and you can accordingly execute the report so if I filled it over here from 1511 to 1511 now I can execute this report execute it now you can see these are the number of transactions which took place in the system on this particular dates so what is important in this is this is the date on which the payment was done so if you remember the invoice was posted with this document number on 12th of November whereas the payment was done on current date that is 1511 and this is what your transaction is so as of now the vendor account is zero that means this vendor has nothing to be paid or received his balance his account is nil at this point of time so moving to the next is now we have done a one particular scenario where the invoice has been booked first and then the payment is processed let's take a different scenario again for manual payment what happens is first uh, when MM module is involved a purchase order is issued to the vendor on the basis of the purchase order at the times advance payments are also made to the vendors the advance payment could be 10% 20% 50% it varies upon the agreement from the with the company and the vendor so once the advance payment is done the vendor takes the order and he delivers the goods 
so once he delivered the goods at that point of time he also gives his invoice against the purchases so once the organization or the company receives the invoice from the vendor then the invoice is booked and against that the remaining payment against the vendor is cleared so now in this case there will be couple of things first we will be making an advance payment second we will book the vendor invoice and third we will make a remaining payment against the invoice to the vendor so how that can be done the advance payment can be done with the transaction code f 48 so we'll first move and we'll we'll do the posting of advance payment so let's make advance payment f 48 enter document date we can enter over here suppose i take the date as uh, 10th couple of days back you need to select the vendor to whom you want to make advance payment and here you need to select the special gel indicators so there are a couple of standard uh, special gel indicators now as per your scenario whichever you have customized you can use that right now over here I am taking up as C advance payment to capital vendor so double click on it and it has been selected as special jewel indicator now I can go to this bank and I need to fill the bank details so I need to take the account account means the bank account that is the bank ledger account so the bank ledger account we just created was 100010 you can go to this amount so how much amount do you want to give or make payment as advanced to the vendor suppose uh, in this case the order is of eighty thousand dollars so against eighty thousand dollars suppose I want to make a payment of twenty five percent as advanced payment the agreement is to make the twenty five percent advance payment against the PO and the remaining payment of seventy five percent will be made once the goods are delivered and the invoice is booked so now we will be making 25% advance payment against the PO that is 80,000 into 25% is equal to $20,000 so amount is $20,000 now and then you can take the value date over here as 10 11 2014 and you can even put some value date and then you can if you want you can put the text as well for your reference like 20 20 percent advance payment to vendor against 80,000 so now once we have done this you can go to enter once these details have been filled on the screen click on to the enter or you can go to this over here on the top enter and will take you to the next screen where you need to select the amount again because the earlier we selected was for one particular line item and now it will take for the line item 2 so it will be again amount has to be selected $20,000 and if you want you can put the text again over here as well so once you have did this now you can go to this document and you can simulate your down payment how it will be reflected so the down payment journal entry will be reflected like this where the bank has been credited with twenty thousand dollars and the vendor has been debited with twenty thousand dollars so if it's okay then you can go to this post option and the document will get posted and your advance payment will be done so clicked now it asks for the business area that means the business area has not been filled somewhere so let's fill the business area you can see business area taken now again we can go to the simulate document 
So simulate, you can see the entry has been reflected and then you can go to this post transaction. So post, you can see the document number has been generated. That means the down payment against the vendor has been made successfully. So if you want to see this document, you can even go to display over here or in fact you can go to uh, else you can go to document uh, transaction code fb03 as well by which we normally have a look with the document so enter you can see this is the document number if you want to have a look with the vendor ledger you can go to the transaction fbl 1n select the vendor now this is an advanced payment and advanced payment is always are special GL transactions so you need to select this special GL transactions over here so once you selected now you can move to execute so once we execute it will show me so as the transactions so the transaction over here has been reflected to you because earlier we made all the payment so the balance was zero in in this particular vendors account but now there is a twenty thousand dollar of advance payment standing in your ledger account you can have a look so now moving next further you can see that this advance payment in the screen has got this special GL indicator as well the indicator is C over here as we selected the indicator C so you can even have a look at what indicator it was so this is what vendor ledger account is all about so there is a still there is a twenty thousand dollar of positive balance standing in account that means it's a debit balance means it's an asset for the organization as of now because we have made an advance payment to the vendor so now moving next is once we have made the advance payment now we will book the invoice so let's move to the transaction let's take a new session so we can move to a new session on the screen and we can book the invoice FB 60 now we'll be selecting the vendor need to select the invoice and over here you can put the invoice number as well in the reference field then you can take the posting date now here you need to check the debit GL account which you need to take and the invoice was of $80,000 so we took $80,000 over here and then we can move next is if you want you can fill text and you need to take the business area over here so once these details have been filled now we can click on to the enter and once you enter you can see the pop-up comes to you when you are booking the invoice it shows 20,000 US dollars advanced to capital vendors exist this basically says that there is advanced payment against the vendor as an acknowledgement enter once more and now you can have a look that there is a balance of 80,000 standing over here and it is red marked why because this we have not filled over here any amount as of now so what we do is we copy this amount from over here and we paste this amount on this screen or you can even type it by your keyboard as well so once you did this 80,000 over here then you can enter on the screen again and you can see enter you can see that now it has turned from red to green which says that everything is fine and you can now go to simulate and when you simulate your document posting will get so your preview of the transaction enter so this is the entry for vendor invoice which will be done as on a screen the purchase is debited with $80,000 and the vendor got credited with $80,000 so we can move to this post button and click on it document get posted so the document number is generated now so now if you want to see the ledger account for the vendor master 
again we can move and we can have a look on this line item display as of now it shows only the advanced payment but you need to refresh this from over here so that the report get refreshed and it updates the data for the transactions we just completed so we need to go to over here list refresh clicked so there is it you can see that now the invoice has been booked for eighty thousand dollars and now the net payable is sixty thousand dollar so for the organization they have purchased eighty thousand dollars twenty thousand was made as an advance now sixty thousand dollars has to be made payment off so now move to make the payment against this particular invoice slash n f dash 53 so you can move to this and we can make a payment against this for that we executed the transaction f dash 53 even you can have a look to the transaction over here on the footnote on this side on the right side the f dash 53 transaction is reflected to you so you need to fill the bank details select the bank select the amount so the amount is very simple 80,000 minus 20,000 is equal to $60,000 to be paid you need to take the value date you need to take the text as you want you can write it like final payment and then you need to select the vendor account over here to whom you are going to make the final payment so this is on the screen now you can go to process open item in which the system will select the line items so you can see there is only one line item as of now however the advanced line item is not reflected why now there is a mistake we did because of that so we can again move to the transaction f-53 so that's to get corrected that mistake select the date select the bank account amount value date text vendor so there is a field called a special jewel indicator so when we made the advance payment we made the advance payment with the indicator c so you need to select that c over here so you can write c with the keyboard over here and it will get selected so now we can go to process open item and you will see that now both the line item will be reflected so you can see 80,000 and 20,000 both are reflected. 80,000 is in is credit and 20,000 is in debit. So the net is equal to $60,000. So you can see 60,000, 60,000 is equal to zero. That means everything is fine. Now you can go and you can simulate this transaction. So simulated and you can see the transaction has been reflected to you. 60,000 payment will be done. 80,000 the vendor will get debited and 20,000 the advance payment will get off because it's no more in advance now as the invoice has been booked so we'll, if everything is fine in this you can go and you can post your transaction so once the transaction get posted a document number is generated so the document has been generated over here to you on a screen and the transaction is complete so again you want to see the vendor line item you can move and you can go for refresh the report refresh and you can see now there is no item why because two open item were there but those item were completed as the pending amount of payment was done to the vendor so this is vendor line item in the same way uh, if you go to the powerpoint presentation so we have completed the credit create gl account then we have booked invoices and we have made normal payment we made advanced payment as well now if you want to see the GL line item display for example we involve banks bank for various transactions and I want to see what are the different transactions which took place in the bank account so for that you need to go to GL line item display and the transaction code for that is FBL 3N so we can go to the transaction slash N FBL3N enter so as you enter you can see the account has already been selected there in case you don't know the account you can click onto the F4 that is function 4 key on your keyboard and it will list down all your GL accounts so once you got this screen you have to again go to start search 
so when you start search you get the list of all your GL account over here so whichever account ledger you want to see you can click that particular account double click and it got selected and now if you want to see the transactions in this bank account you can go and you can execute this so once you execute you find all your transactions on your screen so we did couple of transactions we did two different scenarios the first scenario was that we booked an invoice of 16200 and we later on made payment of 16200 second scenario was we made advance payment of 20000 then we booked the invoice and then we made the remaining payment of $60,000. So that is this. So these are the outflow from the Citibank account as of now. So there's a total outflow of $96,200. US So this is ledger account where you can find details of the transactions what has been done or else there could be another report that is GL balance display it only displays you the balance of the account so if you want to see that slash n fs 10 n enter so you can move to this execute it and when you execute you can see over here that in the eighth period there are these transactions which took place there is no debit transaction in the ledger because the ledger is not debited anywhere but there is only credit transactions of $96,200 been done and is a negative balance of total $96,200 as of now in the system apart from this there is no transaction from 1 to 7th period and even later than 8th period so this is how your manual payment take place in the SAP system